Next, we're going to take a look at the raw water intake system for the engine. It's part of the cooling system. This particular engine has got both a raw water side and a closed coolant side. Right now, we're looking at the raw water strainer. Next, we'll get a look at the seacock that we're going to shut off so that we can pull the strainer out and inspect it. First, we're going to close the raw water inlet. So we're at the seacock right now. I'm going to go 90 degrees to the direction of flow. It's closed. Now we can go take the strainer out of the, uh, the strainer basket out of the strainer holder and get a look to make sure there's no blockage or accumulation of eelgrass and things like that. Next, we're going to remove the strainer from the raw water filter. <clears throat> On this particular unit, we simply unscrew the, the clear top which is a great idea because you can actually look down in there. Some of the larger units will have a glass element or a heavy plastic element. We need to be careful not to lose this sealing O-ring because that's really what's going to prevent water from leaking. We remove the basket, look inside, we can see a small amount of, uh, you know, accumulation. Uh, looks like barnacles and things. I'd rinse this out in fresh water. When it's all good and clean, we're going to set our basket back in place. On this one, it's keyed so that the raw water inlet locks right, right in place. Put our O-ring back in and carefully, without cross, crossing the threads, screw that cap right into place. It's a good idea to use two hands to just snug it up. You don't want to put a wrench on this because you will crack it. That's fine, just like that. Go back, open the seacock up, make sure you don't have any leaks. Next stop in the raw water circuit from the strainer is typically the raw water pump. The pump you're looking at right now is very similar to the one that we disassembled earlier to replace the water pump impeller. From the raw water pump, we have to deliver the water through a heat exchanger. On this particular boat, it being a sailboat, we've got a very high mounted anti-siphon valve in this run. ABYC standards dictate that these anti-siphon valves be mounted at least 18 inches above the water line. And we can see that on this boat, we're probably at approximately 24 inches above the water line. The next stop in the circuit is typically down at the heat exchanger. An important thing to remember is that these anti-siphon valves do get clogged and will stick. They need to be taken apart, rinsed out in warm fresh water periodically to ensure that the valve isn't sticking and that it's not gummed up with calcium deposits and seawater debris. On this installation, the line that exits the anti-siphon valve is running downward to the heat exchanger, which is part of the exhaust manifold on this particular boat. This is the first point in the system where raw water gets anywhere near the fresh water installed in the engine cooling jacket. We use the raw water to cool the fresh water installed in the closed part of the cooling system. And it's at this point within the heat exchanger where this thermal exchange occurs. The next point in the cooling system that we need to take a look at is on the freshwater side. This cap is actually a pressure cap and it's mounted at the top of the heat exchanger unit. It's very important to remember that these pressure caps do wear out over time they should be tested periodically to ensure that the release pressure matches their rated value. It's interesting to note that for every one pound of pressure rating on the cap, we can actually raise the boiling point of the coolant by three degrees Fahrenheit. On this particular installation, we have a high mounted coolant recovery bottle. The hose that you see here is routed up to this container and as the pressure is released it constantly goes up and if there's a slight leak of antifreeze, <coughs> it 
it's gravity fed down into the cooling system your fill point will be at this coolant recovery bottle on this particular engine on some engines without a coolant recovery bottle you'd fill it the cooling system directly at the pressure cap the next pump we need to talk about is the freshwater circulation pump shown here this pump is separate from the raw water pump and is the pump that actually circulates the antifreeze coolant solution through the engine cylinder block and heat exchanger the next important component in any cooling system <coughs> is the belt that drives both the water pump and the alternator and in some cases it may be tied into a refrigeration pump mounted on the engine it's driven by the crankshaft pulley and the tension on this belt is critical to ensure not only that it doesn't slip but that it's not set too tight which would sideload all the bearings on the pump on the alternator causing premature failure the desired tension is approximately a half an inch of belt deflection for every one foot of belt span this one is adjusted perfectly the adjustment point is shown here actually on the alternator mounting bracket you'd have to loosen the bolts that hold the alternator to the engine tighten this bolt to slide it in this groove thus tensioning the belt more on this particular engine the raw water which is ultimately injected into the exhaust system is exiting the heat exchanger down below coming up through this flanged fitting which may contain a thermostat it actually looks like there may be a small thermostat located in this particular fitting maybe maybe not frankly I'd have to check the workshop manual for this engine but one thing's for sure this is the point at which the raw water enters the exhaust manifold and exits the boat in this sequence we can see several things related to exhaust systems and ask ourselves the question if it's ABYC compliant or not and in looking at this <coughs> we see some marine rated exhaust hose we also see that <coughs> Volvo has used double clamps and that they're all stainless steel also the, the, the screw mechanisms for the clamps are offset 180 degrees apart as they should be to ensure proper sealing all exhaust connections need to be double hose clamped to be compliant with ABYC standards interestingly enough the Coast Guard regulations say nothing about exhaust systems as a final check for cooling system we want to make sure that in fact the water the raw water is coming out through the exhaust as we look down at the water line here we can see a good solid flow of water spitting out the exhaust that tells me that the raw water pump is functioning there are no restrictions in the exhaust and everything should be okay on the raw water side of the system <laughs>